Also the additive manufacturing industry, I would say over the last five years, was all about technology and, and, and proof of material capability, that the basics are there. If I look at trade shows or conferences or other companies today, it's all about applications. Everybody has the first part on the moon, everybody has um, first demonstrator parts on rocket engines, in power generation turbines, on automotive applications. No, it's about applications right now. People prove the feasibility. And my personal opinion about the next five years will be, did we really shift from a technology push industry into a product pull industry? So commercial products will be more relevant and then also the very simple questions such as production, such as supply chain, such as logistics will become more and more relevant. So if we reflect on the current main barriers for the adoption of additive manufacturing on a wide scale, we usually classify that in three buckets. On a one material capability, you need to be able to meet your, your, your component requirements, your customer expectation. The second one is cost, product cost. And very closely together with that is actually that you design for the process and to not try to replicate only um, current designs. And the third main barrier that we see is actually a trust in the long-term durability of the products on, on real products. And how we believe we can actually bring value to the aerospace industry in particular is that we have the advantage of having very similar materials and very similar requirements. We own our products in a sense of we can self-release our components onto our products so we have eventually less certification requirements to gain experience on materials, on design for additive and on long-term validation, and we can bring that back as synergies to the aerospace and space industry.